Heavenly Father, we praise you uh, for this wonderful Sabbath that you've given us. A whole day that we can rest from our work, a whole day that we can look at your greatness and at your kindness. Uh, a day that we can be in companionship with you. Lord, we just pray that you uh, draw near to us, that we could come close to you through your word, through prayer, through our fellowship, and that you would bless us with your spirit and give us understanding. Uh, we want to put these truths together in our hearts. We want to be able to build on, on the foundation, which is your son, Jesus. And we want to move forward in this world uh, as a witness, working for you, serving you, and serving our brothers and sisters, bringing them to your life. Lord, we thank you for this Sabbath. And we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God. Uh, if you read, if you studied the lesson this week, it's it's simple. It follows the the way that the Lord has given us certain principles, and as we read it, there was the mention of of three different practices uh, established way in the beginning before sin. If you recall, there were the Sabbath, right? The time that we can get together and, and spend with the Lord and, and worship him, honor him because he rested from his creation. There was marriage, uh, how he brought that union between man and woman under him and his protection and his blessing. And then there was also the practice of work, whereas he told his creation to, to keep busy, to have a, a form of responsibility, to enjoy what they could also do through his blessing. So as we look through the lesson, the idea, the central focus was that our work, our occupations, our, the, the things that we do here on earth can serve as not only a source of income, but as a, a way, as an outlet, a, a platform for us to share Jesus, for us to share and, and to grow in our community through witnessing of the one we serve. Praise the Lord that, that we can do this even when it is that we have to go out and, and work. Uh, we can come together with him in our in our every day so that's that's good that's awesome that this is available to us and as we're going to see in the lesson the bible teaches us how to how to do this how to join the two does anybody have the memory text memorized so maybe you could just read it the memory text It's found in first first Corinthians 15 58 I don't know if someone's reading it but if not uh, you can read it for us I'll read it Thank therefore you, therefore my beloved brethren be steadfast immovable always abounding in the work of the Lord knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord amen. Amen. Steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. What does always mean? Constantly, right? Forever. When, when people look to us, what will they see us doing? When people encounter us, what will they hear about? What will they come to know? It's it's part of us, right? The, the Lord created us in his image. The Lord set us to do uh, his work. He gave us a commission uh, before, before Christ went up into heaven. He left us a work to do. But I think when we look at the beginning, as the lesson starts out with, 
what can we learn? What was the, the first, I guess, task of, of humanity given by God? What were they in charge of? Take care of the garden. Amen. So from the beginning, he, he left them to care, to, to tend to the garden. And to do this would bring them together in love, would bring them together in relationship, both each other and with the Lord. They were to receive blessing through their work. Blessing in, in training and in doing this preparation. And I think the same goes for us. There is blessing. So what I want to do now is, is read a little bit about the blessing that comes from work, about the blessing, the rewards that come when we serve God. So if you're there and you have your Bible, uh, let us begin by, by turning to Philippians 3. And I want to start out in verse 7 and read to verse 11. Philippians 3. Seven, and we can start out there, but I want to look a little bit at the rewards. Also, Galatians 6, there's beginning in verse 7 and going to verse 10. There's some, some, some text here that will show us the blessing, the rewards that come with working. Uh, who, who can start us off with Philippians Three. But what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ. Okay. Did, did you say to read more than that one verse? Seven yes. Seven to eleven. Sorry. Yes. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dumb, that I may win Christ, and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, being made comfortable unto his death. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Amen. Amen. So what do we find in that, in that verse, in, the, in that passage? When I read it, I see that when I join myself to Christ, Right? When I obey and follow him and give him my life and, and through that, busy myself with serving him, I will find what? I will find that, that blessing, which is what comes from being united with him, which is forgiveness, which is receiving his grace, receiving his life. It's, it's awesome to join Jesus. It, it is a benefit. It is a plus in every aspect. Our service is sweeter, right? Our, our task is, is a joy because we are following him. And as a result of following him, when we serve him, when we reach others, when we live for his glory, it's just that much better. Better than money, better than, than any other reward. We have everything that he has intended to give us from the beginning. If you turn to Galatians 6, we'll see it again here. A little bit about the reward that comes from serving from from uniting our lives, from giving our hearts to God. Six, starting in verse seven, we're going to go to verse 10. Chapter six, starting in verse seven. 
Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. And let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all, especially to those who are of the household of faith. So we're talking about being Christian. We're talking about following Jesus. We're talking about our, our work, not just our occupation, but as we see here and as we read in the memory text, what is it that keeps us steadfast and, and makes us immove, immovable? It is to have the spirit of the Lord. It is to, to do good, right? And to reap what we sow. Praise God that there is reward when we serve him. There is reward when we follow him. There is blessing to be had from being a son of the king. And he does not, he does not deny or keep it from us. Uh, who can read Hebrews 10? Hebrews 10, verse 35 and 36. Hebrews 10, verse 35 and 36. Therefore, do not cast away your confidence, which was great reward, for you have need of endurance, so that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. Amen. What do we gather from that, from that text? There's a common, common thread here of, of what keeps us... <laughs> Steady, what keeps us together? When we work, we grow. When we don't work, we may not. When we come together in Christ, we receive blessing. Otherwise, we might lose out on a blessing. So I'm including these texts here because we're going to be talking about working our, our jobs, our occupation, the blessing that comes from, from exerting ourselves towards a, a goal, but also the spiritual side that is what comes from being a disciple, uh, what comes from serving Jesus. And as we continue to look at these texts, keep that in mind that in God, we are strengthened. In God, we are, we are blessed and, and our faith booms. Uh, 2 Corinthians 8. 2 Corinthians 8. I'm going to look at verse 9. 2 Corinthians 8, verse 9 says, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that you through his poverty might become rich. You want to know what is there to gain? Uh, what what comes with with <clears throat> serving, with giving our hearts uh, to the Lord? Nothing bad, as you see here. He set aside everything to make us rich, to make us have eternal life, to make us be blessed and and not lack. Amen. So. Think about that, that, that the Lord loves us and he has opened the door for us to receive the best that we possibly could. Um, going back to, to Galatians, you might know this by memory, but what's Galatians 2.20 say? Galatians 2 verse 20. We're, we're reading a little bit about the reward that comes from, from uniting our lives to God. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, 
But Christ lives in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I will live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Amen. So what, what, how does that fit into to what we're talking about? What reward do you see there? What uh, good thing? We will be with Christ. What was that? We will be with Christ. Amen. Amen. Go to Matthew. Matthew. Who can read Matthew 24? I'll look at verse 46 and 47. All these texts are pointing us in the, in the same direction. Matthew 24, verse 46 to 47. I can read it. Thank you. Blessed is the servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Verily I say unto you that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. Amen. So here we see the, the promise. We see kind of like the, the, the benefit of being busy for our God, of, of working and not slacking on, on what it is that needs to be and what it is that we need to be doing. If, if we are blessed with eternal life, if we are given the reward of, of being a son, a daughter, a king, and then he wants us to enjoy also bringing others, also working his field, right? Then we don't want to lose the blessing that comes from, from doing so. And so all these verses are, are to encourage us as a people to continue to work, uh, as a people to continue to, to strive to bring others to the truth that is the grace of Jesus, that he has given everything so that we can be saved. And when we do so, you're going to find that your life is fulfilled, that your life is satisfied. When we do serve him, we will taste of, of this everlasting water. Uh, Romans 6, verse 23. What is it that we share? What is it that we are talking about? For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. That's good news, and that's worth sharing. That is worth uh, signing up for, right? Uh, last one, 2 Timothy 4, verse 8. 2 Timothy 4, verse 8. Who can read that for us? I'll read it. Finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day, and not to me only, but also to all who have loved his appearing. Amen. Amen. So if, if we want that reward, if we want that blessing, if we love his appearing and we love him, then we will be found serving him. We will take part in his work. And that's, that's an invitation to us all. It doesn't matter who you are or where, what your, uh, it doesn't matter what you do or what you think you have. The Lord can employ us. The Lord is, is willing to add to us and use us. Praise God for that. Uh, I just remembered here, 1 Peter 5, if you look at verse 2, you'll see, you'll see uh, again this truth. Shepherd the flock of God which is among you, serving as overseers, not by compulsion, but willingly, not for dishonest gain, 
but eagerly, nor as being lords over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that does not fade away. Amen. The crown of glory is, is what Jesus wants to give us. And so he asks us, he calls us, he trusts us with our work. So moving on to Sunday, there's many different sides of work. There's many different kinds of work. Uh, what, is, what did we learn in, on Sunday's lesson study? It points us to Ecclesiastes 3, 12 and 13. There it is at the top of the lesson. What do we, what do we learn here? Did we read Ecclesiastes 3, 12 and 13? What, what does it say? I know that nothing is better for them than to rejoice and to do good in their lives. And also that every man should eat and drink and enjoy the good of all his labors. It is the gift of God. Just like everything good is from God. Amen. Satisfaction in all their toil. Do, do, do we find satisfaction in our work? Do we understand that when you put in a hard, a long day and, and you look back at that day at what you've accomplished and you feel good, that that comes from God, that that is, that is what he wants. So it's encouraging. It's, it's, it's how he has designed us and he shares in those feelings. He, he imagine the Lord looking back on the very first Sabbath and, and feeling what he did at, at his creation. Imagine when Jesus comes and, and he asks us or, or, or there's, a, there's, a, there's a, a story in the Bible where the master appears and he sees what his servants have been up to and and he tells him what well done imagine jesus finally arriving and being able to look at us and tell us well done with what i've given you with what you've gone through you did well and so that's that's what that's one of the sides of work that, that is really the good part, right? When you're sweating, when you're out there uh, having trouble to get something done, maybe when you're out witnessing and, and no one wants to engage or, or receive what you have, you can remember that the master is the one that we work for, amen? So as you see in the lesson, it's talking about work. Uh, some people work because they need to pay the bills. I think all people, a majority, they must put food on the table. There's things that you need to uh, do. So work helps us in this way. Uh, I think as, as we saw in the lesson, it's not perhaps the original uh, the original reason, but that's what it has become. And uh, as we see here, uh, many people find a, a sense of worth, value from their work. And this is not always a, a good thing, but it, it's not always a bad thing. Genesis 3.19, if we read it, what is it talking about? What occurred uh, to kind of change work from a, a blessing, a, a sense of fulfillment 
to then all of a sudden something that was going to cost us uh, pain, maybe suffering. Genesis 3.19. Question asks, what is the context here and what does it say to us about another side of work? What occurred in Genesis chapter 3? In Genesis chapter 3, we see that sin entered the picture. And what was going to result now, uh, what was going to be needed now for Adam and Eve to be able to eat, they could no longer just go out and, and pick of the goodness of the abundance of the earth. But now they had to sweat and, and work hard in order to eat. And the, the, the verse there says, till, till death they would have to do this. And so this is about, you know, their farming and, and their way of sustaining themselves. But also this goes for any achievement. Anything that we want to accomplish is going to require work. Uh, now, as we read in scripture, we're going to find that when we are working, when we do busy ourselves, what are we less likely to do? What are we less likely to fall into? Sin. Yeah. When you're working, you don't have time to, to get into maybe something bad. Uh, when, when you're busy yourself, it's less likely to fall into uh, temptation. And so work is good for our character. Work is good for us coming to depend not on ourselves, but on our God. And so in working, we can cooperate, we can receive and, and follow God's leading. And as we read, through his mercy, he gives us life. Through his mercy, we can enter into his reward. I think too that, um, <clears throat> well, when, growing up, I can remember my mother would always say, um, things done by halves are never done at all. So, uh, you know, she, it was her feeling that God wants us to do everything to uh, the best of our ability. Amen. Amen. And like you say, everything uh, reflects on on him, right? If I'm Christian and I work hard, then that means what? Oh, Christians that follow God must be, uh, must have some form of integrity. Let me, let me see what that's all about. Let me see where that comes from, right? And it leads people to God in a positive way. So we want to work hard, like you say, 100%. Uh, Sin caused work to be painful, uh, maybe rep, rep, a repetition, drudgery. The lesson calls it, you know, something that can make us sad. Oh, man, work, and my, half my life is gone in work, right? But if we go to God, he can show us how to use our work in a way that now we are more than just an employee. Now we're more than just a laborer, a worker, but now we have a bigger goal, a bigger purpose. And we can use our work to glorify him, to lead others to him. We can make a ministry even in our work. Uh, what do you do? Uh, the lesson asks, what do you do? That is, what are you doing with your life? And how can you better glorify the Lord by doing it? So remember what we've talked about. Uh, what is it that you do in terms of making our work, making our life 
ministry. Please share. Uh, I'd like to hear to hear from you. There's many of us on here. What is it that you do? And then we'll go to the Bible and see what it is that we should do. But I'd like to hear some ideas, especially in these days that, that maybe our, our churches are restricted, our, our churches are limited. How is it that we in the everyday are turning our work into ministry or are giving that witness, that testimony, or actually serving Christ? Let me know. Uh, in my job, I drive the kids after school for their activities. And I always have my radio on a Christian station playing the, the Christian music. And one day I heard the little boy, 10 years old, Nico, he was singing the hymnals. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I say, oh, okay, I, I cannot, uh, I, I, I think I'm not allowed to talk with the kids about Jesus, only if they ask me some. And I had some opportunities to talk because he's very curious um, boy. And one day he asked me about Jesus and I started to talk to him about Jesus. But the, the amazing me was he was singing the songs. Amen. A little bit of music ministry. <laughs> that's, that's, that's awesome. Who else? Just what is, what is it that we are doing? Great and small, little things here and there. To work or in our work to glorify the Lord. I'm not a I'm not a door-to-door -door person. <laughs> I know that that's a powerful ministry that we're supposed to do. I just I um <laughs> it scares me <laughs> to do that. It makes me nervous, but um but uh whether I'm working at school or or in a classroom or prior to that, um, my prior jobs, anywhere that I used to work. And, and right now, every house that I go to with um, how I'm working this year with personal tutoring, um, I, I always, before I go to the location that I need to be, I'm always asking God to put a blessing on all of those people. Um, and I believe that his presence is there. And, um, and I ask him for opportunities every, every day, every time I'm going to be there. And sometimes you see the big opportunities where someone actually wants to pray with you. Um, I've had that, that happen, but also, the, um, even just with like the health ministry, um, I have a hard time seeing someone in pain or dealing with any issue, even something as simple as acne, when I can tell them what they can do in their diet to, to help with that. And um, even at the grocery store, I ask them to bag the groceries light because I have arthritis and, and the, the cashier and the bagger were asking me what I do for it. And that, anytime anyone asks what I do for it I, I you know I tell them right away that it's you know do alternative medicine and do a healthy lifestyle and and these two people especially they were both suffering from um, some forms of arthritis it, the bagger was an elderly lady and I told her right away I said I said cut out the red meat and I said, there's acid in it that actually hurts arthritis. And, and she's like, oh, and, and she, and when, then we kept talking about, you know, just the things that she should eat. And the cashier lady was joining in on that too. And the, the lady said, oh, and my sister is a vegetarian. And I said, well, she's got the right idea and you better talk to her more about it. And I've had people come back to me like from work and say, you know, I, I, it's been a few weeks and I cut this thing out and, and, and I have noticed a difference. And, um, and, then, and then in that moment, 
like those are the times when I tell them, well, praise God, because he's the one that's told us to eat these things. He's made our bodies so he knows what we need. And, and so it's just in in anything, even even with talking about illness and stuff. Um, but I've also found even just smiling, <laughs> smiling with people or at people, no matter what. And and then um, people that know me when they when they say, well, you know, usually you're dealing with a lot of pain and how do you smile all the time? Then that's another opportunity. And I say, because God's greater than my pain and he gets me through every day. And if I'm still here, then I'm still smiling. So it's just for me. I have a harder time doing it with strangers, but it's more so with people that I know. I feel more comfortable and I can just go straight up to them with whatever they might be going through and try to talk to them. And then I ask God, you know, prior to that, I'm always asking God in my conversations, show me how I can bring your name into it. And <clears throat> so that's how, how personally I try to you know, live my life with trying to get God's word out there. Amen. Amen. It's not hard at all to, to refer someone to who can help them, right? And maybe we can't, but the Lord can. Praise God. Who else? Is there anybody else that, that would like to share maybe what you do to to Incorporate ministry into your work, into your day-to-day. -day. Good morning, Juan. Good morning. Uh, this is Marilyn. I just want to um, tell you that sometimes when John and I go to, uh, well, different places, we will see people that are lonely, and they really want to share with us. They want to share a memory from long ago. And sometimes it's a lengthy memory, but what we've done is we've learned to listen. And when we're finished, we may not, we usually say, sometimes we say a prayer with them and sometimes we say a prayer after we leave them. But I, I think that um, there's an awful lot of lonely people in the world. And when we go to the gym, we're seeing more, more older people there than the younger ones. And it's a place where people can, um, can relate to one another. And even at the gas station, John, I'm finding that he's talking to people as he's putting, in, putting the gas in the car. And uh, they, uh, they want to they be heard. And I think it's important that we take that minute to, to listen to them. Amen. Amen. Any others? Um, I don't know if my microphone is on or not. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, I actually haven't. Um, well, I, I am. I am on the chat line circuit mostly because I, I don't get out much during the day. There's really not too many places I can go around here. But um, <clears throat> sometimes. Uh, there's a board, there's a, like a, an electron board, a phone board that we can leave messages for each other. And if I hear that somebody's done something or gotten a job that they've been looking for or, or a counselor that they've been looking for or a situation they've been looking for to improve their lives, I try to give them encouragement and say way to go or... Um, I leave my poetry on inspiration boards. Um, sometimes I'll go into a live room and talk to somebody during the daytime who I know is in a welcome room or something. And we talk about our personal lives a little bit. Um, we don't give information much, but you know, every now and then there's an opportunity to talk about Jesus and I like to share Christian poetry and sing Bible verses and stuff like that. It isn't much, but maybe somebody in passing hears that at some point, you know, and 
is encouraged by it, I'd like to think. Amen. Amen. Uh, the, the, the smallest that we give, the Lord will multiply. The Lord blesses. And, and it's awesome to hear you all and how you are doing uh, ministry in your life. It's, it's encouraging. Uh, if we have our Bibles, let's go to 1 Corinthians 14, verse 8 to 9. And then I'm going to read Romans 12, verse 2, because we're, we're wanting to glorify God, right, in our work, in our lives. We're wanting to do ministry, incorporate it, as the sister said, in everything, in our, in our greetings, in our jobs, in the way we handle other people and the way we listen. So 1 Corinthians 14, 8 and 9, tell us, for if the trumpet makes an uncertain sound, who will prepare for battle? So likewise, you, unless you utter by the tongue words easy to understand, how will it be known what is spoken? For you will be speaking into the air. So what is it that we should be doing? The trumpet needs a certain sound. There are people outside of, of our church who are tired of the, the status quo. They see and they recognize that this cannot be right. We're not headed in the, in the right direction. They're unhappy or maybe they, they see something wrong in the world and the way that, that our lives unfold and eventually end, and they want something better. And so we are to show them the blessings that come from following God, the, the joy that comes from knowing his love. And, and as you said, in, in, in the way we talk, in the way we interact with them, they can see this, this difference. They can see this special sound to, to, the, to the message that we have in our hearts. Uh, Romans 12, verse 2. Romans 12, verse 2. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. We're trying to give them a glimpse of the character of God, uh, to show them how his will for us is the best, the best thing that we could find. Because of that, how do we minister? How do we do in our lives, in our work? We must not be conformed to the world of sin, the world, the kingdom of Satan. We must be different. And praise God in Christ, we can be, and they will see it. Work and nurture. Work and nurture. Our vocation, our jobs, what we do is all about just that. Being busy with our life. What do the following texts teach us about work, about using hands as a symbol? Uh, I, I know that we all read these texts. We, we don't have to uh, go there unless you really want to read one. But Deuteronomy, it points us to Deuteronomy 16, Ecclesiastes 9, Proverbs 21, Jeremiah 1. And it asks, what do these texts tell us about using hands? What does Deuteronomy 16, 15 show us? When we use our hands, right? When we serve him, the Lord will bless Amen. Amen. When we work, he will bless. Ecclesiastes 9 verse 10 uh, implores us to whatever we do, do it how? For the glory of the Lord. For his glory. Do it with all our might. Yes. With faithful diligence yeah. and not laziness. Yes. So again, all these things, 
let's say it's not ministry. Let's say it's our it's our job, just what we're doing, or or like you say, uh, anything that we pick up, we need to do it a hundred percent, do it well. Why? Because it is a ministry. It is a reflection of a servant of God, and it could bring others to Him. Proverbs twenty one twenty five. What does it say about about using our hands? Those that are lazy don't work. They, they, they don't. Jeremiah 1.16. Many forsake God, right? But we need to worship him. And, and this will be seen in the work that we do. Uh, I, knew, I, knew, I knew someone who, who used to say, don't talk to me about work and they didn't they didn't want to hear it they didn't work I don't ask how he got by <laughs> I, i'm not sure but we as christians we as as followers of the lord must must be the best must work hard in what we do because that reflects that reflects uh, who we serve. We want to find meaning, we want to find joy, and in God we can. The lesson here is telling us that when we do work, when we do something, what does it do for our life? It helps us understand that, well, the word here it uses is what? Self efficacy. Who can describe what that means? Self-efficacy. Becoming more effective. Yes. So you know what you can do when you apply yourself, right? And, and in Christ, we know that we can do anything. Praise God that, that he gives us what we need and that his plan is for us to be fulfilled. For us to Ele share. Go ahead. Ellen uh, says here uh, that the Lord will give understanding to anyone who is fully connected with his work. So if the Lord's going to give us understanding, and uh, we need to be open to that, of course. But I think it, uh, if we, when I was uh, in uh, undergrad school uh, back in the 60s, we use the word Protestant ethic. That's kind of, kind of fallen out of disfavor, but that was in sociology, the Protestant ethic. That meant doing the work to the best of your ability and also not being lazy. In other words, uh, it, it had nothing to do about Protestantism, but it had to do with how people uh, would go about doing their work. It's probably a, a Northern European term uh, used by a lot of the people uh, like the Amish and others. Uh, we know how hard most of those people worked. And I think it uh, it gives us the, the uh, ability to uh, understand how people would do things to God's will and, uh, and also to uh, their own betterment. And those two things I kind of thought uh, went more or less hand in hand in, in a at that point. And I think with work and nurture, I, I saw that with my family. My father, um, he, was, he was pretty stern. He really wanted uh, people to work. And there wasn't much room for someone who wasn't working. So I remember going into, he had several little grocery stores. And one of the stores he had, um, he would have a lot of eggs. People bought many, many eggs. Mostly. And uh, so he would have me bagging eggs. And when I get done with the eggs, there was always something else to do. I thought, well, if I get done with these real quickly, I'll, I'll be able to go home. No, you can stay here and you can dust the shelves. You can work at the cash register. There was always something to do. But work was important to him. And he taught us that early. You can sweep the floors. I always had something I could do. And it, I think, I'm sure it was a blessing. 
And he did not give me a salary. What he gave me was a little can with a hole in the top that he put in a few coins whenever he thought I was doing a good job. <laughs> and it was, it, was, it was interesting. I can look back on it now and think, well, he was trying to nurture me and teach me the value of work. Amen. And, and remember that when we work, is it to us, for us to be able to increase ourselves? Is it for us uh, to have and, and hoard our riches? When we work, it's to be able to help others. And so we work hard, like, like you mentioned here, the lessons talking about nurture, we work hard to be able to share what we have. And so praise God that uh, he wants us to understand how, how it is a blessing to give as well as to receive. And so, as we mentioned, uh, we kind of already did our attitudes towards work. Uh, what are ways that maybe we can be more of a, of a blessing? Uh, the lesson says, what ways might you be able to use your work to be more of a blessing to others. We've kind of kind of already talked about that, but if you have anything else, maybe something came to your mind of how how we can in our work be a blessing. Well, I can remember as a teenager, my mother worked. And so uh, what I would do, I didn't have to do this, but what I would do is every day I get the vacuum cleaner out. And I start upstairs and I vacuum upstairs and come all the way down and do the downstairs. And I did this for her every day to help her because or normally she had to clean on the weekends. So it was just a little thing that I could do. And it wasn't hard. It wasn't hard. And um, I got it all done. And then I began to start trying to fix dinner so she wouldn't have to come there and stand and do all the dinner. And she would call me. She says, honey, and this is how that started. She said, honey, if you could know my mother, that's how she started her conversations with me. Honey, could you help mama a little bit? And I'd say, what do you need, mom? And she'd say, and I'm 17. And she said, could you tear the lettuce up and have it in the bowls for a salad? I said, sure. I said, anything else you want me to do? Well, yeah, could you get the table set? I said, okay. And it graduated to where... She would call me and she'd say, honey, can you do this and help me get started? The dinner started. So before long, I was actually having the dinner almost ready. And that's how I learned to cook. And she says, I'm so sorry. I didn't teach you how to cook with me in the kitchen. I had to teach you over the phone. But that's how I learned. And if I could do it to help my mom, I was more than happy to do it. Because it, I mean, she didn't have to stand there and do it after she got home from work, tired and needing to get off her feet. And it, it was, she appreciated it. She really did. And of course I was doing it for her, but the whole family benefited it because they got dinner earlier. Amen. So I, did someone want to say Yeah, I was just, thinking that, um, mm -hmm. oh, excuse me, go ahead. Oh, th thank you. I, I I think that another way that we could help others with our work is not just to use our acquired skills and learned skills just to get paid, but I think in some instances we can use our skills and the things that we've learned to do our work as favors to other people, like our family and our our close friends, if they don't have the money to have something done by somebody else. If we know how to do it because that is our work. I think um, that's another way that we can use our work to help others, not just to do it for, to get paid, but in some instances we could do it as a favor to help those in need. I think that would be a good thing. Amen. I was going to say that I think love in work is very important also. Um, Paul said that he knew that those who neglected physical work would soon become enfeebled. Um, that I think that's important to remember, but I also think that 
when you love the people that you're working for, it, um, it can make it a joy. I worked uh, as a teacher in many different grade levels, but the one I enjoyed the most was the children in kindergarten. And I like that because you were there and they, uh, they, did, they respected the teacher. And I love those kids. I felt very close to them. And I think that the relationship that you develop with those that you work for is important too. When I was working at the grocery store, I loved my dad and I would do the best I could for him. And when I worked in education, I loved the students that I worked with. I had special education students that I really cared about. And I felt so good when they were succeeding. And I think that um, I found that praising those little, little achievements that they were making meant something to them too. They need a lot more praise and love than they do um, this. Well, they need discipline, but do it with love. Amen. So, Juan. Go ahead. Sorry, John. Sorry, John. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, I, okay, I, I, I'll try to make it quick. I'm so sorry. Um, I was going to say it like since I was 18, every time I'd ask when I needed a job I would pray to God first and so whatever job I would get I've never had a job that I haven't been happy in no matter what it was that I was doing because I prayed about it first so if that's the job that called me back after an interview and wanted to hire me I knew God needed me there and it didn't matter if I was young back when I was young if I was just answering phones or whatever I knew God needed me my presence there so that his presence was there so he could do a work there and um, one time at um, um, at church I was staying late for um, helping out with a Pathfinders program. And there was this young man that was there um, visiting. He was like 19 or 20. And so I was trying to talk with him. And um, he said that he's had a hard time finding a job and he had finally just found a job. Um, and he was just, um, he was working at a hospital or like an elderly home, like just cleaning the rooms. And I was like, that's such a blessing. That's an amazing job. Like, that that's such an honor and and he he was talking about it like he was disappointed because he was he was saying it's so low bottom job and you know and he's like what are you talking about he's like I'm I'm a janitor and I said but you don't understand I said God has you doing a work for these people that are sick and they can't take care of themselves and and because he was like, it's not like I'm a nurse or saving their lives or anything. And I said, I said, but you're doing a part to help these people who need help. And, and whether they need a doctor or a nurse or someone to bring their food to them or someone to clean their room, I said, you're doing a great work for God. And he'll give you an opportunity to maybe even talk to someone there that's lonely and needs to hear something uplifting of God. I said, but even if that doesn't happen, God has you there um, to help take care of the sick. And that's one of the callings that we are called to do. And I was telling him that with such enthusiasm. And he was like, he started smiling and he was like, well, I never thought of it that way. He's like, you can really put a good spin on a janitor job, you know? And I said, but that's what's so important about it is that it doesn't matter what you're doing. You're still doing God's work. And it's an honor to, to do that. Amen. Amen. I think we're, we're out of time. Uh, let's, let's pray real quick and ask a blessing, and then we'll catch up on the second service. Hopefully those that are driving will make it, and if not, we'll see you on Zoom. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that you include us, that you give us the ability to be able to work. Uh, we know that your standard is high and you expect the best, but it's because there is a message behind everything that we do. We are your stewards. We are your representatives on this earth. And Lord, we just pray for your spirit and your power so that we can be the best agent for you wherever we are. 
Help us to find ways to minister. Help us to find ways to include you in our everyday and to be a light to those around us. Lord, we thank you for your blessings. We thank you for what you're doing with your church. And we just pray for the service and everyone here that they might be blessed also. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.